Hello, welcome to lesson four in our introduction to computer science. This is Brett, and today we're going to jump into variables and types in C. So starting off, we're going to review these, this architectural model that we've talked about in the past lessons, where we have inputs, we have outputs, we have a central processing unit, and we have memory. So we're gonna focus on memory a little bit more and give you a model to understand how memory works. And to do that, we'll analyze what's happening with the memory in the program that we wrote in the last lesson. So when you think of memory, I like to think about it as similar to an Excel spreadsheet that has a single column, this A column, and then has a bunch of these, these cells. And so you can see it, here is the cell A1, here is A2, A3, A4, and that continues to go down all the way in like one big continuous block, all the way down to as much memory as is in your computer really. So the computer, when you ask it to do something or ask it to use memory, it will store one byte worth of data, which is eight bits. So we talked about zeros and ones in the last lesson. So eight zeros and ones, there's four, five, six, seven, eight. That's called a byte. And each one of these cells can store one byte worth of data. So if we come to our program here, first we have our function that a function is just a collection of instructions that are grouped together and given a name, and then the computer will go through and execute those instructions line by line. So it will, if we run the main function, which is what happens when we execute our program, it will come to line five and execute that, six, there's nothing to execute, it'll come to seven, execute that line, and so on, all the way until we return from the function and it exits. So let's look at line five and what's happening. First, we're declaring a variable called age and we're giving it a data type called int. So what happens when we do this is the computer comes in to memory and it reserves the, enough space that it can store an integer. And so an integer is gonna take up four bytes. And so if we pretend that this is our memory here, uh, we'll just put some blank bytes in here and it's going to re it's going to reserve these four slots of memory for that integer now we don't have a value in there yet because we didn't assign any value to age but it's reserved that spot for us and then we can reference this point this place in memory by its name age and that's the variable so when we come down to the next line, we call this function called printf, and it just outputs to the screen hello world. The next line does the same thing. It prints hello world, or it prints what is your age, and asks a question. And then this line 10 here, the scanf, it will wait at the, uh, the command line for you to enter in some type of a value. And what we pass it here, this is gets really interesting. We say that we need to accept a, ver uh, a value from the, um, the command line, and we want to store that value in this memory location. And so you have this, this operator right here that's saying, give me the address of the memory address of where age variable is. And so this is going to return the equivalent of A1. Okay, so it's going to say A1, and then it will go in and write the value in there. So if you write in 35, it will modify these bytes to give you the value of 35. So let's pretend for a second that we ran our program, we put in 35, and the computer comes into memory and it modifies the value here to represent 35. And I'm just gonna put in some random bytes here. This doesn't really represent 35, but uh, just as an example that this scanf will take the location of our memory and it will write the value there. Now when we come down to line 12, it says your age is, and we reference this variable age. So this will go to these cells, it will get the value that's held in the cells, and then it will print that out to the page. So if you can keep this model in your mind that when we have a variable here, that there are two things that we can reference on this variable. The first is the value, which is the value inside of the cells here. 
The second is the location in memory of that variable, which is referring to the A1. So A1 is the first slot in memory that this variable starts, and then it continues on. So when we use this AND sign right here, that's referring to the A1. That's referring to the location in the memory. Now maybe if we declared another variable down here called uh, int height, and we were going to do that in inches, it's going to reserve another slot of memory here, another four bytes, that starts on A5. And so if we were to scan again, and so if we were to refer to height, the address of height is going to be A5, the starting address, and the starting address of age is going to be A1. And so all of your memory is used in this big continuous block that would go down on and on and on. Then when you refer to age without this uh, memory address location, it's going to refer to just the value that's inside of the cells. So these four, these four uh, cells or these four bytes are going to hold the value of 35, like we had mentioned before. And then if we were to do the same thing with doing another printf and say your height is, and give it the height, it's going to refer to the value that's stored inside of these bytes right here. So always remember there's value and there's memory location.